So if you want to, to get a land off the board, which you can ask me. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, for one week more. So then let's continue with the, what we were talking about the last time. We started to talk about the international investment. And we finished talking about cross-listing. So cross-listing is selling your shares in another, on another stock market. Okay. So we saw these advantages. So the specific word for this in the US is called Yankee, Yankee stock. Have you heard the word Yankee before? Or Yank? Yes. New York Yankee. New York Yankee. Yankee refers to America. So we can make a name for that is the Yankee stock offering. So we sell our stock or equity to US public investors. We can call that a Yankee stock offering. Another way to sell our stock in the US is by using an ADR system. So we have US stock market, US and Korea, let's say. Here's the US and here's Korea. So we're a Korean company. We want to sell our stock to US investors, right? Why? Why do we want to sell our stock to US investors? Yes, but why do we want to sell to US investors? That's we want to get more money, right? If we just sell in Korea, we only have so much money, right? Or so many investors. But if we sell in the US, we can get more money. Do you understand? Yes. Get more investment. So we want to sell our stock in the US to get more money or get more investment. So one way we can do that, we talked about, is simply listing, cross-listing, okay? Cross-list, list on the U.S. stock exchange, okay? Does, is that expensive to list on the U.S. stock exchange? Can I just say, I want to list on the U.S. stock exchange and I can do that tomorrow? Or it's expensive? It's expensive. Expensive? Who do I need to pay money to? Yes. Who's going to help me to do that? Or mm -hmm. Banks, investment banks, accountants, lawyers, okay? I have to pay them a lot of money, so they make my accounts like the American way, okay? The lawyers set up the in the US, investment bank is going to help me. I need to pay the investment bank, okay? Finally, I'll be able to cross-list there. There is an easier way for companies, it's called an ADR. So one way is cross-listing, another way is ADR. ADR is basically receipt of stock in Korea. Do you understand receipt? When you go to the shop, do you get a receipt? Yes. Okay, so this is a receipt of stocks in Korea. So it proves that I own the stocks in Korea. Okay, the US investor, another way is the US investor, could invest in Korea, in Korean won. Okay? If they buy the stock in Korea, then they invest in Korean won, okay? But we are the Korean company, so we want to attract the US people. Do the US people prefer to invest in Korean won in our stock market? Or do they prefer to invest in US dollars in their own stock market? Yes, yeah, so ADR is a way that they can invest in USD, and this is sold on the US stock market. Okay, so it's slightly different because with the cross-listing, I need to prepare all my accounts for the SEC, right, do all of those things. With ADR, I just give a receipt of my stocks in Korea. I'm not listing on the US stock market, okay? This, these stocks are held in the bank, investment bank in the US, okay? So these stocks go to the investment bank in the US. Investment bank keeps them in their safe, okay? And the investment bank sells the receipt to the investor, okay? So the invest in US dollars. Do you understand that transaction? 
the investment bank buys our stocks in Korea. Okay? Then the investment bank sells a receipt, to, like paper, to investors saying, I own this stock. Okay? But this, the receipt they sell is in US dollars, not in Korean won. And then this receipt is sold on the US stock market, it's traded on the US stock market. So many companies also do this way, it's called an ADR. How to the currency rate? Currency rate changes. Uh, <coughs> so that's a good question. So the price of the stocks is in Korea, right? So you're, you can lose money on the currency rate here, it's going to be transferred to USD. Okay? But you get paid money in uh, dividends. You understand dividends? Dividends. Do you understand dividends? Does anybody understand dividends? What does dividends mean in Korean? You studied financial management last semester. How do you say dividend? What is dividends? Can you explain in English? Money company pays you depending on how many stocks you have. Money company pays you from their profits. Okay. Do all stocks pay dividends? Do all companies pay dividends? No. No. Why not? What kind of company doesn't pay dividends? Big money. Yes. So some companies don't pay dividends. So what kind of company doesn't pay dividends, usually? Old company that's been in business for a lot of years, or a young company which just started? Which one doesn't pay dividends? Young company. Young company, why not? They choose to invest. They reinvest the money in the company. Okay, so a company has a choice when they get their profits. Pay to our owners, the stockholders, or reinvest in the company, okay? Young company has a lot of investment opportunities. They reinvest in the company. Old company might not have a lot of investment opportunities. They repay the money to the owners in dividends. Okay? That is what dividends are. Do you understand dividends? Yes. Okay? How do you say dividends in Korean? So we get paid our dividends in US dollars here, not in Korean one. Okay? But uh, so it's in the end it's it's just easier for us to manage because we're getting the price in US dollars and the dividends in US dollars but it doesn't cut our currency risk we still have a currency risk okay? in the Korean stock market so any other questions? so here we can see that Corn stocks are often traded in the U.S. exchanges ADRs. It's a receipt that represents the number of foreign shares that are deposited at a U.S. bank. So the foreign shares are deposited in the bank and they give a receipt. The bank is a transfer agent. In any case, if you do the cross-listing, you're going to need to contact the investment bank. Okay? So there are advantages to trading ADRs. ADRs are denominated in US dollars. Okay, they can trade on US exchanges, be bought and sold easily. Dividends are paid in US dollars. Okay. Most underlying stocks are bearer securities. The ADR are registered. So uh, it means that you can't be uh, stolen, right? So a good exa an example here is Volvo. Do you know Volvo? Yes. Volvo uses ADR in the US. So they trade in the US on the NASDAQ index and they use this name, Volvo. The depository institution is JP Morgan. Okay. The custodian in Sweden, we have Swedish Bank is also helping. Okay. They can buy the stocks in Sweden on the Swedish stock market. Transfer the stocks to the US Bank. Okay. US Bank then makes a receipt for the stocks and sells the receipt. Okay? People can buy and sell the receipt. Price can change. Okay? So Volvo trades on the Stockholm Stock Exchange and then use the ADR system 
to make its, st its stock available in New York. Okay, so the key point is the investment bank is in the middle. Uh, another type of way we can do is global registered share. It's not that common. Global registered share is one share traded globally. Okay. Uh, I ADRs are just receipts for bank deposits of home market shares and traded in just the US, right? Mainly. But the global share can be sold in any country. <coughs> so just this company, when they started, they started using this global registered shares. But since that time, they broke up, Daimler and Chrysler. Uh, so now it's Daimler, just Daimler. Okay, so the main exchange for Daimler, German company, is the Frankfurt Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange. But their stock is traded on 20 different exchanges in the world. Okay, so these shares are fully fungible. What does that mean? It means a share purchased on one exchange can be sold on another one. So it's called a global share. I can buy the share in New York and then sell it in Frankfurt. Okay? Normally I can't do that. I, I can only buy the share and sell the share in New York. They can trade in both US dollars and euros. So the main advantage is that all shareholders have equal status and direct voting rights. In the ADR, I don't, it's hard to vote in Sweden, right? I have to, the bank is holding the shares. So the bank has to send me some documents. And I have to send back the documents to the bank. And we have to organize, right, for voting. It's not easy. But with the global registered share, we can vote directly. But the disadvantage is we need to make a global register and clearing facility. So it means in order to be able to buy the stock on one exchange and sell on another exchange, we need to make our own register and clearing facility. It's like administrative body. Do you understand administrative body? How do you say administration? In Korean. What did you say? Are you sure? How do you say administration? Yes, administrating. How do you say in Korean? Do you understand administration? What does administration mean? Administration fee. Wonju. Wonju. Is that correct? Administration means managing the things, right? Keeping the paperwork. Okay, administration, we also talk about paperwork. Do you understand paperwork? Okay, so there's that kind of cost here. So it, because of that, it has a limited success. Most companies just opt for the ADR, ADR system. So examples of global registered shares is Deutsche Bank, UBS, and NYSE Euronix. So do you have any question about the cross-listing or ADR? Global registered shares. So discuss with your partner how can you sell three different ways or four different ways you can sell your stock to Americans if you're in Korea. We show some ways to arrows on the board. There's one simple way, right? So how can you sell your shares to Americans if you're in a Korean company? You start your own company and you want to sell your stock to Americans. How can you do that?
So, Ju Gan Chang, Chan? Yes. Can you tell us some ways we can sell our comp part of our company to Americans? What's the simplest way that Americans would invest in our company? We don't have to do much. Uh, Trey Young J. Yes. 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 ADR, what's that? Uh, trade the US dollars brokers and. Who is the broker? Who is acting as the broker, the go between? Bank. What kind of bank? What's the name of the special type of bank which helps with those things? Investment bank. And it's called an investment bank. Okay? So we have different types of banks. Uh, in the US there's a debate about that now. Uh, we have, in the US they used to have depository banks. So people deposit their money. Right? And then the bank lends the money. Okay? Do you understand that? Yes. Then we have investment banks. So that means that people deposit their money, okay? And the bank invests the money in the stock market. Okay? Or somewhere. Okay? Investment bank. Which one is more risky? Investment bank. Investment bank is more risky. So in the US until 1999, there was called the Glass-Siegel Act, which it made separation of deposit and investment banking. But under Bill Clinton's government, they decided to repeal this act and allow these banks to join together. Okay? So what happened then was these banks started to say, well, I'm not making much profit by lending money to people in the local community. Why? Right? But I can make a big profit by investing in risky investments. Do you understand risky investments? Yes. So which one am I going to get a bigger bonus doing? This or this? In this one. I'll get a bigger bonus doing this, right? Does the US have the regulation to stop me from doing this? No, no. No, so they don't. They're fighting with the UK to have low regulation, right? <laughs> Who can have the lowest regulation? Yes. So guess what? I'll do this. So this was great for a couple of years, right? The CEO in the bank was getting bonus of $500 million, $1 billion bonus payment, right? But of course it's riskier, so eventually they had some problem. And then, suddenly, these people are in, in, in trouble, okay? Uh, who thought they were depositing in a safe bank, but actually the bank wasn't a safe bank. So, then, in the old days, People who invest deposit in the investment bank, they know they're depositing in an investment bank and it's riskier. Okay? So most people was doing this kind of savings bank. Okay? So that's the difference. Okay, these days, because uh, nowadays it's in the democratic election, do you know the US election? There's Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton and so on going for the democratic election. Yes. They were debating about this just yesterday or the day before at the democratic election, right? Maybe Bernie Sanders wants to bring this back, okay? But Hillary Clinton doesn't want to bring back. And then Hillary, Bernie Sanders says to Hillary Clinton, why was your biggest contributors all from Wall Street? And then Hillary Clinton says, because I went there after the World Trade Center in 9-11, and uh, I have them. Bernie Sanders says, no, that's not relevant. Why are you talking about 9-11? I asked you about Wall Street people paying for your campaign, right? Do you understand? Yes. A kind of debate. So, 
and different people have different opinions about whether we need to separate or not. Okay? But anyway, investment banks, uh, one of their jobs is they help companies to sell their stock and bonds. Right? Help companies and governments, because governments sell bonds too. They help the companies and governments to sell bonds and stocks. So they're kind of specific, specific type of banks. Okay? So they are like matching the matching the companies with the customers. Okay? Uh, when a company sells stock for the first time, what happens is they call the investment bank. Okay? And they ask the investment bank to find some customers for them. Because I start my own company, okay, and I want to make a public company. Do I know many people who want to buy stocks? No, but investment banks work in that industry. They know people who might be interested in buying my stock. It's like a boot on sand, right? I'm selling my house. Do I know a lot of people who might be interested in buying a house? No. Does the Budong Sang know people who might be interested in buying a house? Yes. So they're helping me to sell my house. Okay? Investment bank is helping me to sell the stock. My company stock or my company bonds. Okay? So they introduce, introduce the company and investors. Do you understand? So one way they do this for bonds, especially for bonds, is they make an auction. They organize an auction. Okay? Are they going to invite you to the auction? Are they going to tell you about the auction? Are you going to spend one million dollars buying bonds in a company? No. So the investment bank knows who to invite to the auction. Okay? They have contacts like funds and other Right, maybe Korean government pension fund, they might invite to the auction. Okay? So the investment bank, what they do, they check the company. That's the advantage for the investors. Do the investors want to check everything about your company? How do they know that you're not just a fake company? Do you understand fake? Yes. How do investors know you're not a fake company? Do they have to check all your accounts and check all your books and check everything? No. No, so who can they get to do that for them? The investment bank is going to check that you're a real company, okay? Then the investment bank is going to make a brochure. Do you understand brochure? Yes. And then they are going to send the brochure to the investors. If the investors are interested in your brochure, in your company, then the investors will tell the, the bank, I'm interested in that company, okay? Then if it spawns, they will invite the investors to an auction. The investors will decide to buy your bonds or not at an auction. Okay, when we sell government bonds, everybody comes to the auction. I say, I have one US government bond, it's going to pay $10 million in 10 years. Who will pay $9 million for this bond? Okay, then you put up your hand. And then I say, who will pay $9.1 million? And you put up your hand. Okay, you can also have auction for houses too. You understand auction? Yes. So, who goes to that kind of auction? Investment funds, right? Maybe some wealthy individuals. Okay, people who can afford to buy bonds. Then with stocks, uh, what we're going to do is, it's almost like a VIP system. Do you understand VIP? I will tell my investors, investment bank, you're an investor, right? I'll invite you out for a round of golf. Okay, do you want to play golf with me? <laughs> right? Maybe you're really bad at golf and you don't want to play golf with me, but Anyway, you want to know about this new exciting company, right? So you're going to come to the get golf game. Are you going to let me win? <laughs> Maybe you'll even let me win, right? So then I'll tell you while we're playing golf, hey, there's this new company I'm, I'm checking out at the moment. They're really good, right? They have new innovation, a new product. They're going to do IPO. They're going to sell their stock to the public, right? Do you want to get in? Yes. In this chance? Right? Then you're going to ask me, well, how much does it cost? And can you give me the brochure? And I say, okay, then I'll give you the brochure and I tell you the price. Okay? So the investment bank decides the price that the stock will be sold to the first investors and only to VIPs. Okay? So I decide the price between you 
and the company. Okay, usually, not always, but usually I decide a price that's a bit more favorable for investors than for the company. Okay? So then the investor, you get, get the stock in the company, and then you can decide, sell on the public stock exchange or not. Okay? Usually the stock price goes up immediately. After the IPO starts, you get the stock, then the VIP starts selling their stock on the stock exchange. Usually the price is higher than what you paid me. Okay. Is that a fair system? Does that sound fair? Not really, right? Some VIP people uh, can get the advantage. They get to buy the stock at the price that the investment bank decides. And then when they sell their stock, usually the price goes up. Okay? Sometimes it doesn't, it goes down. But one reason the companies like the price to go up is that it makes some publicity, right? Oh, the first day the Amazon stock went up by 20%. Alibaba stock went up by 10%. Okay? The first day, or 50%. It's on the news. So the company gets some publicity too. So this is investment banks. Okay? So uh, there is a course on financial markets online by Yale, if you're interested in that. Do you want to work for an investment bank? Do you want to work for an investment bank? So if you type in investment banking Yale, you'll see investment banking and secondary markets, open Yale courses, right? Do you know Yale University? Yes. So just, this is uh, Robert Schiller, uh, Professor Schiller, he's, he's famous in uh, <coughs> academic, right? So he talks about what is investment banking, right? Investment banking's underwriting process, okay? So and the importance of reputation. The investment banker is a manager of securities, okay? So underwriting means that the, what happens with the bonds is the investment bank buys the bonds from the government, basically. And then they sell at the auction, okay? So they are going to buy the bond from the government, they will get like 1% 1 discount and then they will sell at the auction. That's underwriting. Okay? So uh, we also talk about the company. The investment bank underwrites your bonds. It means that they are going to buy your bonds. If, they, if we can't find somebody at the auction, the investment bank is going to buy your bond. Right? Do you understand that idea? Underwriting means I already bought the bond. So the investment bank buys the bond from me, from my company, and then they sell at the auction. But if they can't sell at the auction, investment bank keeps the bond. That's underwriting system. So <coughs> that was just a side investment about, uh, explanation about investment banks. Okay? So working in an investment bank is quite profitable. If you want to make money, want to make a lot of money, then working in the investment bank is a good way to make money. Okay? For example, if you're selling the government bonds, it's a very easy job. Just to organize the auction. But you can get a percentage of the bonds. And if the US government is selling bonds worth $100 billion, and you get just 0.0001%, you're still going to get a lot of money for doing that, organizing the auction. Do you understand? So we're talking about large amounts of money for companies. So investment banks just get a small percentage as a fee, they can still get a lot of money. So investment banking can be quite a lucrative uh, business. So the investment bank is helping you with the ADR, right? So what other ways is there apart from the ADR? What other ways can we sell the stock in the foreign market? Cross listing. What's that? So, uh, so I thought you said that the board, uh, you change by the stock in Korea and. So 
So that's incorrect. You don't buy the stock in Korea. That's ADR. The stock is bought in Korea and deposited in the bank, and then the receipt is sold in the U.S. That's ADR. What is cross-listing? Invest in Korea. What? Invest in Korea. Korea no, it's not investing in Korean one. Can anybody tell me what cross-listing is? It's when your company is listed on the U.S. stock market. Yes. So what does that mean to list on the U.S. stock market? Then U.S. investors can invest. Okay, you need to make your accounts according to the US accounting practice. Okay, you need to be checked up by the Securities and Exchange Commission, and then they will allow you to sell your stocks in the US on the US stock exchange. So you cross-listing, you're selling your stocks in the US on the US stock exchange directly. Okay? What's another simpler way that US investors can invest in my company? The simplest way? The US investor decides to buy the stock in Korea, okay? Through a fund or, or directly themselves, okay? That is the simplest way. But if I want to encourage US investors to invest in my company, I'm going to sell my stock in the US, okay? Not just US investors, I can do that in London, I can list in London or in Germany, another country. So, <clears throat> then let's look at the international equity benchmarks. So we have uh, North America, Europe and Asia. So first North America. So have you heard this before, <coughs> Dow Jones Industrial Average? Where have you heard that name? Index. Hmm? Index, right? What is an index? Showing the number of each stock. Showing what? What is a stock index? Or here, benchmark. Can you explain? Index? Anybody explain what is an index of stocks? What's another word for index? What does index mean? List. List. Yes? So what is an index of stocks? A list of stocks. So look, here's the list of stocks on the Dow Jones. Do you know these companies? 3M, American Express, Apple, Coca-Cola, Intel, IBM, Johnson & Johnson. Is every stock in the US on the list? Yes. And all the company and British companies. So this, an index is, we choose some companies to go on the list, okay? It's like representative. Do you understand representative? Yes. Okay? We also have the S&P 500, which is very, name, very famous, okay? Uh, it says industrial, but this is not just historical. These modern, there are 30 companies, okay? Uh, there, it has nothing to do with that fact they're an industrial company. Uh, so we choose these companies, blue chip, as you mentioned in this case it's a blue chip company. For example General Electric has been the longest one on the index. S&P 500 is going to be more companies, right? 500 companies listed in the US. So <coughs> we look at this index we'll see it's going to be a lot of companies. So, uh, here we can see many more companies, okay? 500 companies. So you might not know some of these companies, smaller companies, right? In the US. But still quite big companies which are listed in the, in the US. So, these are indexes. And they can tap, we usually follow these indexes to see how the stock market is doing, okay? So we can look at the uh, past performance of these stocks. 
we don't have to look at the performance of every stock on the market, right? We can see that yesterday the S&P went up by 1.62%. Means that the average of these stocks, some stocks went up, some stocks went down. Average, the stocks went up. Okay, so we can see the 10-year graph here of the S&P 500 and the maximum graph here. Okay, so was the U.S. a good place to invest in 19 in 2009? February, the index was 750, now it's 2100, okay? So you would have tripled your money, right? From 700 to 2100, if you invested at the bottom of the market. But most people invest in the long term. So they would have invested here, okay, I lost my money, but it came back up again, right? So what, what do you think is the next direction of the stock market? Go down. Why? So we're going to talk about it in a minute, but you can look at the historical data, but just like we talked about what affects exchange rates, some similar things affect the stock market. There's a lot of factors which affect the stock market, okay? GDP growth, fiscal policy, monetary policy, inflation, interest rates, productivity, exchange rates, okay? All of those things can affect the stock market. In the short term, what would you think is the main thing that affects the stock market in the short term? Like exchange rates, speculators, right? Trend following, people following the trend or copying each other. Okay, but uh, we can see this is uh, one index in the US, right? We have Mexico, Canada, in Europe, FTSE 100 in the UK, CAC 40, in France, Frankfurt, okay, Germany, Milan, Belgium. We also have Euro, the Euro area, like uh, Eurostock, Eurostock 50 is, is uh, or Eurostock 600, right? <coughs> so here we have a Eurostock 50. So, uh, just not coming up at the moment, but Eurostock 50 is one of the main index also for the Euro area, okay? Uh, Nikkei in Japan, okay? Hang Seng in Hong Kong, have you heard these names before? Yes. So similar to the S&P, they have the companies which are listed in Japan, which are listed in Hong Kong, the main companies. Then, uh, we have iShares MSCI, they make uh, country specific baskets of stocks designed to replicate the country indexes. So this is a low cost convenient way for investors to hold diversified investment in several different countries. So when we invest, we should invest in a diversified way. Why is it better to invest across 10 countries than just one country? We're going to talk about more in a later class. Why is it better to invest in 10 countries than just one country? One country. Why is one country more risky than 10 countries? Yeah, why? Yes, if something happens in this country by itself, we lose a lot of money. Okay? If we invest in this country and nine other countries, we only lose 10% of the money, okay? So it's like in the old days when the ship, they sent the ship the different way from the UK to India, right? Because if there's a storm in this way, at least this ship will get there. So a, little, a similar idea for investing. We can use the iShares MSC. Uh, let's just look at that here. <clears throat> so here's a world ETF. Do you understand world ETF? Exchange traded funds. So they go and they they buy the stocks in uh, different countries. But it just turns out that most 58% are from the US because the world's biggest companies anyway are from the US. 8% from Japan, 7% from the UK. So this could be uh, quite 
this is a very diversified way to invest. Okay? So we can see all of the companies on this list, there's 48 pages. Okay? But uh, this is the highest weighted company. Apple, Microsoft, are they global companies? Yes. So they're not just doing their business just in the US, their customers and revenues are from other countries. Okay? Exxon, General Electric, Johnson & Johnson, Wells Fargo, Amazon, JP Morgan, an investment bank, Nestle. So of the first 10 companies, probably seven or eight are from the US. Okay? Biggest companies in the world. Uh, Walt Disney, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, okay, Citigroup. So if I recommend you to invest in any product, I would invest you to invest in, suggest to invest here. Okay? In the iShares MSCI World ETF. Okay? You're not going to make a big profit because it's diversified, but you're not going to make a big loss, right? It will kind of follow the world GDP growth more or less over the longer term. Okay? So also, if you want to suggest investment products to somebody, this is a very diversified way to invest in stocks. We can see that it can go down as well. Here's ten year. We can look at the ten-year graph, right? But we could invest in the U.S. or anyway. For the last three years, it's gone from ten thousand to fourteen thousand. Okay? You could invest just in the U.S. or just in Japan or just in Hong Kong, or you could make your own investment program where you buy an ETF from the US, buy an ETF from Africa, right? But this ETF is, already did all those things. It's put together investment in the different indexes in the different countries, okay? Main shares. So we can see the world economy has been improving and the companies have been improving since 2012. It's up about 30%, okay? So <clears throat> if we go to Korea, Korea, to be honest, Korea doesn't have that good investment opportunities. This is a new company, Tiger ETF. So they are just existing a few years, and they sell ETF to Korean people. Okay? You can find this on Down Finance. So maybe after you graduate, you can start your own company like this, making selling ETFs in other countries. Okay? If you want to do that, you could sell the world ETF. I can only find one world ETF that I can buy in Korea. Okay? It follows the iShares one, right? So maybe you can set up your own. To be honest, Korea's market is not as developed, financial market is not as developed as the UK or the US, right? The UK has a lot, thousands of different ETFs that I can invest in, I can choose from, also the US. But in Korea, not that big of a choice so far. We'll develop in the future, right? So here we can see ETF products in Korea. We can see Tiger is one company. Their name often comes up here. Codex is, is another company, which sells the ETF to investors. Area. So here is Tiger, S&P 500. Okay. So what this is, is I have two choices. I can go and send my money to the US, or send my money to the UK and buy an ETF there, right? But that's too much messing about because I have to change the currency and send all the documents by the courier. Okay, so I just want to buy an ETF in Korea. It's easier. Okay, so this company helps me to buy the S&P index. Do you understand? So this is going to follow. The fee is quite low on the ETF, just 0.7%. Okay, if you buy a normal fund, the fee will be about 3%. So you could have bought this ETF in Korea quite easily. Okay, you just register with the bank or the stock trading company, and then uh, you can buy even just Shipman One, right? Or even maybe Man One, right? You can invest with the stock company. Just you could do that for practice, right? You won't lose much money. I don't suggest that you tell your mother to sell the house <laughs> and invest in the Tiger S and P 500 ETF. Although if I told you that two years ago, you might be happy now, right? <laughs> but <clears throat> just you can do it for your own as a hobby, right? You could do some investment in that. Make a, an account is free, right? With some investment company like SK Investing or one of them. Just need to sign some documents, and then you can you can start to buy some ETF product like this. Just a very low amount of money just to practice, right? So you can see there, <coughs> there's a big list, right? Uh, 
of ETFs. It also has the euro stock, so you can invest in the euro. But unfortunately, it's if I want to invest just in Ireland or Netherlands stock markets, I can't do that. Okay, they don't have that option. In Europe, they only have maybe for the German, for the DAX stock market, and it's not hedged. It's not hedged, so I don't want to invest in that because it's not hedged. So I think there's opportunity in Korea in the future for more companies to make more ETF products <coughs> offered to the customers. You can get some green ETF which invests just in green companies, right? Uh, you can invest in China in other countries. They have just one uh, global fund. You can look through here. They have one which follows the MSCI, this one which we looked at that I suggested, they have one fund which follows this, okay? But as yet, it's not widely traded in Korea. Not that many Korean customers are buying this kind of fund, okay? Do you have any question about this, this kind of way of investing? <coughs> investing in the index in the country, or investing in the world, world ETF? Right, so that's a diversified, diversified way of investing which is safer, especially for pensioners or older people, than investing in just one company or two companies. Say for me, is that they are that big profit? No, you're not going to make big profit. For example, my friend thinks now the banking industry in Ireland is going to recover quickly. So he wants to invest in the, just in the Irish bank. So maybe he can make big profit. The Irish bank stock price might go up 200 or 300 percent in the next few years, right? But he's not going to make 200 or 300 percent in two years on the world ETF because it's so diversified. Some stocks are going up, some stock always stocks going down, right? But it's the same on the other side. He's not going to lose that much money because the same, right? There'll always be some stocks coming up. There might be a crisis in the U.S., but people will still be buying things in Brazil or another country, right? So if, if you diversify around the world, we'll talk about it later a little bit more about the theory. Uh, it can be uh, less risk, but also slightly lower expected return. Okay. So any more questions? <coughs> and let's finish there for today. Thank <laughs> you.